everyone! Welcome to my channel, Andra Makes, where I'll be sharing things I've made. And today I'm going to be showing you how to make the No Zip Skirt by Blue Dot Patterns. But before I do that, I thought it would be fun in each video to quickly share a mug from my collection. So here's today's mug. The pattern I'm going to be making today is the No Zip Skirt by Blue Dot Patterns. And it comes in three different lengths. 20 inch, 26 inch, and... 32 inch. It's an A-line skirt and instead of a zipper it has a button. It's a very versatile A-line skirt and I was actually a pattern tester for Diane for this skirt and I have a video already on my channel about that if you'd like to check that out and this is an extremely versatile pattern because depending on the fabric you choose. It can work for any season and most occasions. So it is a wonderful design and it's fun and relatively easy to make. So I'm excited about showing you how to make it. The size range goes from a size 4 to a 22 and that goes from a waist size of 26 to 40. So a really good size range there. The skirt I made for the pattern test, I used this very pretty corduroy, which makes it perfect for fall and winter, and this is view B. And I did use, oops, I did use a button and hemmed it, because when you pattern test, they want you to make the pattern directly as written and not make any changes. And also for my corduroy skirt I used a fun cat print for the pocket but like I said I have a video already on my channel that goes over this skirt in a lot more detail. But for the skirt I made for this tutorial I changed it up a bit. I used this camo, I think it's a lightweight twill I got it from Joanne and this, the one I'm going to be making in the tutorial is view A and instead of a button I used a snap so I'll be showing you how to do that if you've never done a snap before and instead of hemming, if you watch my channel for any length of time you know I'm not a fan of hemming especially circle skirts so I made a hem band and I'll be showing you how to do that as well if you'd like to, but if you want to add a button and if you want to hem instead of adding a hem band, you're more than welcome to do that, but I won't be showing that in this tutorial. And the hem band is a game changer. You can use it for any skirt, dress, shirt, anything. That's what I usually do because I'm just not a fan of hemming. And let me take this off the hanger and show you a couple more fun features I added for the waistband facing. I used this super fun contrasting fabric. It's like oranges and pinks and I just think that looks really cool. And also I used that for my pocket. So there's the pocket on that side and then here's this pocket of course. So consider doing that. Let's have a little fun with our projects. That's why we sew to mix it up and have fun and I usually when I do a hem band I usually like to use a contrasting fabric but I didn't have enough in my stash for a color that would coordinate well with this and I didn't really want to go buy anything so I just used the same fabric. I encourage you to use a contrasting fabric if you'd like but you do you and also choose something fun for your waistband facing. So let's have a little fun with this project and if you've never installed a snap before I would suggest practicing before you do it on your actual garment 
just get the same amount of layers and the same fabric and the interfacing that you'll be using for your skirt and practice a couple times um, inserting a snap. Also, pay attention to Diane's interfacing instructions. Be sure to interface your waistband facing. And if you're using a lighter weight for your skirt, like a linen or something like that, interface those pieces as well. She does recommend in her pattern interfacing both the waistband and the waistband facing, but I only interfaced my waistband facing because this twill is, has a little more weight to it and I was afraid if I interfaced both pieces, the waistband and the facing, that I would have a harder time getting my snap prongs through. So keep that in mind if you're using two lighter weight fabrics for your waistband and your facings, you probably want to interface both of those. Make sure you pay attention to all the marks and dots and buttonhole placements she has on her pattern pieces. What I do for these dots is I use a hole punch and punch mine out and then just take my marker and mark my fabric like that. And I do that for this one as well. And on the center line marks or waistband placements, just whatever, however she has them labeled on the different pieces, what I do is I just have this down on my fabric and then I will fold this back on the line and then mark it like that. That's how I mark my pieces, but you mark yours the way that's best for you. And here's another one. This says center front. So I just fold, leave it on my fabric when I'm marking it, fold it back, and then draw a line across. And there's another dot. So it's very important that you mark all those lines and dots, especially for the buttonhole because that's going to be very important when we go to install our snaps. So mark it on the right side of your fabric pieces. And also mark it on the wrong side just in case because sometimes you need to see it on the right side and sometimes you need to see it on the wrong side. And also, speaking of marking your pattern pieces, I have links in the description box to my favorite marking tools, and I also have links to some other things we'll be using, uh, snaps if you're using snaps, the setter tool for the snaps, a point turner, a sewing gauge, several different things, so check those out, and if you need any of those items, if you purchase anything after clicking on my link, I'll receive a small commission from Amazon for referring you to them for those products. So be sure and check those out in the description box. And also back to the hem band. In the tutorial, I added a four inch hem band to mine and you will see that. But after I made the skirt and tried it on, I decided I wanted it just a teeny bit shorter. So I ended up taking that hem band off and changing it to a two inch hem band. And also Diane is offering 25% off this pattern if you go through the link in the description box and also enter code ANDRAMAKES25 at checkout and you'll receive 25% off your skirt pattern. So go ahead and download the skirt pattern, print it off, tape all your pieces together, cut all your pattern pieces out, mark them, very important, choose some fun contrasting fabric, and let's make the no zip skirt. Before we start sewing our no zip skirt, we want to finish the curved edges of the two pocket pieces and the two pocket facings. So grab all four of those. These are my pocket pieces. I'm using contrast fabric for my pocket facings. Grab all four and serge or zigzag your preferred finishing method. Just the curved edges of all four pieces. And then after you do that, grab one of your skirt front pieces 
and grab one of your pocket facing pieces, the corresponding pieces, and put them right sides together. This is my pocket facing. This is the right side right here. Right side together with the corresponding skirt front and match up the notches and pin or clip this diagonal edge right here and sew it using a half inch seam allowance back stitching at the beginning and end do that to both skirt front pieces and your pocket facings and then flip your facing to the wrong side of the skirt piece give it a good press and then on the outside of your front skirt piece top stitch using a quarter inch seam allowance back stitching at the beginning and end okay. once you've attached your pocket facings to your skirt front pieces it should look like this here is the wrong side of my front skirt piece and the right side of my facing and here's what it should look like on the right side of your skirt front there's the top stitching and there's the facing on the inside okay you want to grab your left front skirt piece this is very important grab your left front skirt piece here's my pocket facing right side up and my skirt wrong side up. Grab your actual pocket piece, the corresponding one, and place it right sides together with the corresponding pocket facing. Right sides together. Once you've done that, grab both pieces, the pocket facing and the pocket, by the right side together and flip them out so they're by themselves and they're not touching the skirt. Line everything up, pin or wonder clip, and you're going to start on this edge, back stitching at the beginning and end, and you're just going to sew from this edge to the dot you made and back stitch. You're not going to sew any of this up here. So from here to here. Once you've done that, it should look like this. Here's the front side of my left front skirt and here's my pocket and pocket facing. And you should have just sewn from here to here at the dot, back stitching. And what we're going to do now is just on your pocket piece. This is my pocket the pink is my facing. So just on the pocket piece, just above the dot you made where you stopped stitching, take some small snips and snip into your fabric, but don't go into your stitching, just right up to your stitching. Then you're going to fold that back half an inch remember just on the pocket piece not your pocket facing give it a good press and then about an eighth inch away from your surged or zigzagged egg edge sorry you're going to spread it apart so you're just doing the pocket piece here's my facing out of the way fold that back give it a good press and along your finished edge, sew about an eighth inch away, back stitching at the beginning and end, and then you're going to repeat the same thing to your pocket facing. So flip it over, and just on the facing piece, snip just above the dot where your back stitching should be. Don't go into your stitches. And then fold that back half an inch. And just sewing the facing piece about an eighth inch away from your finished edge, sew that down, back stitching at the beginning and end. Just remember to do everything separately. 
Here's what we should have so far. This is the wrong side of my left front skirt piece. This is the wrong side of my pocket. So lay everything out like this, and this is the step that we just did, where we cut, a, snipped above the dot separately, the pocket, pocket facing separately, and the pocket piece separately. We folded it over half an inch, and then we top stitched, and we did the same thing for the facing piece, so those should be separate. So fold everything over like this. And then, fold this back so you can see what you're doing. Here's the where we stopped stitching in a previous step. You're going to place all that together. There should be three layers. There's the right side of my pocket, the right side of my facing, and the wrong side of my left front skirt. So from there where you stopped stitching, down to this end of your pocket, you're going to pin or clip just from there to there and you're going to baste this. So do that and meet me back for the next step. Here's what the right side of your left front skirt piece should look like. And you should have top stitching here, and then these two should still be separated. That's what it should be looking like. Okay, the next step is to grab the right front skirt piece and put it wrong side up, and the right side of your facing should be up. So get your other pocket piece and put it right side down. Let me, let's turn it this way because we're only going to be matching up these edges. Put it right side down. This is my pocket piece. Right side down with the pocket facing. Again, separate it from the skirt because you're only going to be sewing the pocket and pocket facing. You don't want to be sewing into your skirt. Pin or clip, and this time we're going to go all the way around the curved edge. So stitch that with a half inch seam allowance, back stitching at the beginning and end. Meet me back here for the next step. Okay, here's what it should look like. This is the right side of my right front skirt piece. And what we just sewed are the pocket piece and pocket facings right side together around the long curve. And then if you flip it back, it should look like that. So flip your everything this way. So this is the front of your skirt now. There's the pocket. And then find the side seam. There's the front right side of your facing. Put everything together. There should be three layers and baste from the end of your pocket piece to the end of your diagonal. So just baste those together from here to here. And then meet me back here. If you would like, use your preferred finishing method, either serging or zigzag, and on all four skirt pieces, finish both sides and along the bottom. So do that for all four if you'd like to finish yours. I searched mine and then once you've done that we're going to start sewing the skirt pieces together. So get one of your back skirt pieces, put it right side up, find the other back skirt piece, match your notches, you should have three, match those and then pin or clip along that edge so with a half inch seam allowance, back stitching at the beginning and end, and then repeat the same thing for your front skirt pieces. I'm going to put them right sides together. Find your notches, pin or clip, 
So with a half inch seam allowance, back stitching at the beginning and end, and on both pieces after you sewn the seams, press your seams open. Here's the part where I'm going to be adding a hem band to my skirt. If you don't want to, just skip ahead. But the way I do mine is I want to add four inches to the length of my skirt. So the formula I used for cutting my hem band is take the length you want to add, multiply that by two, and add one. So I wanted a four inch length added to my skirt. So four times two is eight, plus one is nine. So I cut a nine inch wide by width of fabric strip, and I folded it in half, and then I surged the raw edges. I will have to surge the other one again because I'm gonna be cutting it off, and I'll show you that in a minute. But use the formula that that formula for the length you want to add if you want to add any length. If you don't want to add length but you still want a hem band, I would suggest cutting a two inch wide strip by width of fabric and doing the same steps. If you only cut a two inch wide strip and fold it in half and do these steps, it will add just a teeny tiny bit of length but you don't have to hem a circle skirt. So you do what works best for you, but here's my strip that I have folded in half and surged the raw edges, and I'm going to get one of my skirt pieces. It doesn't matter which. But this is my back skirt piece, and I'm going to match the hem band with the skirt, the bottom part, and my fold is up here. And then here are my surged edges of my hem band and here are the surged edges of my skirt. So match those up and pin or clip and sew using a quarter inch seam allowance. And then after you've done that, here's my excess that I have left over. I like to make my hem bands longer then what I need, instead of trying to measure and get it perfect, this is just easier for me. So here's, here's the wrong side of my skirt and my hem band, and I'm just going to cut that excess off. And then what I have left of my hem band, I will need to serge that again. So do those steps if you're doing the hem band, and then press your hem band down away from your skirt and then press your seam allowances toward the hem band and then if you'd like you can edge stitch or top stitch along that hem band, hem band to uh, help keep it pressed down and then that's what it looks like before it's pressed and top stitched. So if you're doing those steps, you'll need to do a strip for each skirt. One strip for your front and one strip for your back. And then meet me back here for the next steps. There is your hem band pressed and with the seam allowance going toward the hem band and then top stitched along that edge of the hem band. You are welcome. May you never hem a circle skirt again. I came up with that not long after I started sewing because hemming a circle skirt is not enjoyable. Hemming in general is not enjoyable, but definitely a circle skirt. So I came up with this to not have to do that. Okay, now the next step is we're going to stay stitch both waistbands or waistlines. And on the back skirt piece, it is really straightforward. Just start at one end of your side and go to the center and stop. And then flip it over and start on the other end and go to the center and stop. And do it 
with a quarter inch seam allowance and all that does is help stabilize that curve so do that but it's a little not trickier but different on your front piece so put your front skirt wrong side up here's your pockets everything's all smooth and everything and you're going to take the pocket that can fold back and fold it back so you only have the right side of your facing showing and then pin that and you'll want to pin this together as well it doesn't get folded back And then, well, let's pin this right here to keep it all together. So now with your right facing, pocket facing, facing up, and then everything else is wrong side up, now you're going to stay stitch. So start here, or on one end, it doesn't matter, and go to your center seam and stop and then flip your fabric over and start on the other end and then go to your center seam and stop using a quarter inch seam allowance. So do that and meet me back here for the next steps. Get your front skirt piece and put it in front of you right side up and grab your left front waistband piece. Not the facing but the waistband and you're going to put it right sides together on the left front of your skirt but what you're going to do is you should have a dot on this pattern piece I put one on the front and the back because I never know which way it's going to match up so I do both just to be sure and you're going to match that dot with the folded edge over here on your left front piece so it's going to hang over a little bit and you want your raw edges at the top even but put that dot right at that folded edge and then pin it so you're going to have a little bit hanging off the edge like that and then match the other end of your waistband piece with your front skirt piece and then pin or clip all along those raw edges okay I'm going to do two steps at once because it saves time at the sewing machine so on the right front of your skirt you're going to find your right waistband piece not the facing piece but the waistband and you should have a center front line marked on your pattern piece line that up with the center seam on the front of your skirt and then pin or clip that keep your raw edges raw edges across the top even and then same thing with the dot on the front uh, right waistband line that dot up with the folded edge of your skirt piece. It's going to hang over a little bit also. It's going to hang over a little bit. And then continue clipping or pinning across that raw edge and keep them separate. Don't sew all of it together at once, but your right waistband to the skirt and then your left front waistband to the skirt. So sew those together separately with a half inch seam allowance and then meet me back here. Here's the wrong side of my front skirt piece and here's what we just sewed. This is the left side of the waistband with a little hanging over over here and then here's the right side of the waistband. We put them right sides together and sewed it and then flip it up and this is what it looks like and there's a little extra hanging off on this side 
go ahead and press those up like this and give them a good press. I can't remember if I said that in the last clip or not. So press those up and give them a good press. And then the next step is very similar. Get your back skirt piece and find your back waistband. And we're going to put those right sides together and do the same thing, but make sure your notches are at the top. You want to match first is you should have a center line drawn on your waistband piece. So go ahead and match that up to the center seam on your skirt and then pin or clip and then match the sides of the waistband and the skirt. Do the same thing for the other side and then fill the rest in with pins or clips and it should work out fine. And sew it with a half inch seam allowance and then press the waistband up away from the skirt. And then meet me back here for the next step. Now we're going to sew the side seams of our skirt. So get your front skirt piece right side up and place your back skirt piece right side down. And if you did a hem band, you want to go ahead and match up those intersections as best you can. And then the bottom of the hem band. Do those first and then make sure your waistbands are pressed away from your skirt on both front and back and then match up your waistband seams. And then here at the top as well and just continue pinning or clipping all the way down and you'll have some notches down here as well. Match those up. Do that on both sides of your skirt pieces and sew both sides with a half inch seam allowance back stitching at the beginning and end and then press your seams open and then meet me back here. I want to show you how to bury your serger threads if you use the hem band method. So leave long serger tails and if you didn't don't worry about it you can either go back to your machine and start up here maybe a little bit and serge down and then leave a long tail or you can just split these threads and tie them in a knot but for future reference you're going to need a darning needle and I have this little set right here that's made by Clover and I'll put a link in the description box for these and this is the one I'll be using. And what you want to do is bend your serger thread tails and make that, pinch it and make that as tight as possible so you can slip it onto your darning needle easily. And pull everything through and then you're just going to thread this into your serger stitches. I like to go through about an inch and a half to two inches and then just put your needle out like that and then pull your thread through. And give it a little tug and then trim it off. So that's how you bury your searcher threads for a nice neat finish. Now it's time to sew our waistband facing pieces together. So get pattern piece 5, pattern piece 7, and pattern piece 6 and put them in that order on your table in front of you. On pattern 
pattern piece five, have everything right side up and you should have a dot in the bottom left corner and a center line mark. On pattern piece seven, put your two notches at the bottom and then you should have a notch on the lower left side and a notch on the upper right side. Pattern piece six, your right waistband facing, you should have a notch at the upper left hand corner and a dot at the lower right hand corner. So place them in front of you just like that in those directions. And then we're going to put them right sides together. So put pattern piece six down over pattern piece seven and match that notch. And then put pattern piece five over pattern piece seven and match that notch. Sew them together on each side with a half inch seam allowance and then press your seams open and then meet me back here for the next step. Lay your waistband facing pieces out in front of you and put the notches that are on piece seven at the top. And then what you're going to do is on the opposite side, your notches are up here, no notches down here. You're going to fold it up half an inch all along that edge. Remember your notches are up here so don't fold that edge. And I have this nifty sewing gauge that I love and I will put a link for it in the description box if you would like to get one. It slides up and down different increments. So you just find the half inch mark and then fold your fabric up and press it and then just go along every so often checking your measurements and pressing also, here are some of my favorite marking tools for sewing. This one's really neat. It's white, so it shows up really well on dark fabric. And I'll put a link in the description box for both of these as well. Okay, after you have this pressed up half an inch, you're going to get your skirt and put it in front of you right side up. And you're going to get your waistband facing pieces and match it to your skirt right sides together with the fold that you just folded up at the bottom. And then you're going to take your waistband facing and match it to your waistband right sides together and leave this edge that was already pressed, leave it pressed like it is and we're going to sew this seam right here and then all the way across the top you're going to match your seams match your notches if you have them and your center lines that you have drawn drawn and then the side seams over here match those up all the way around and leave this edge Fold it up as well and sew this side. So you're going to sew this side all the way across and down that other short side. And then meet me back here. Once you have your waistband facing sewn to your waistband, you're going to clip the top corner on both ends. Just make sure you don't cut into your stitches. And then you're going to flip the waistband facing to the inside of your skirt. And the reason we trim that corner right there, you want to get in there. And this is called a purple thing. That's seriously what it's called, T-H-A-N-G. And I will link to this in the description box. It's really neat. It has lots of different functions but you want to gently take something and gently poke those corners out. Just don't do it too hard because you'll poke through your stitches and you don't want to do that. So take your time doing that on both corners and then flip your facing to the inside of your skirt 
and then give everything a good press and meet me back here we're almost finished after you've given it a really good press from both sides the back and the front isn't that a beautiful finish notice it covers all your raw edges and if you use a contrasting facing it's even more fun so after it's really pressed good and flat I have pinned mine from the right side just in a few places pin as little or as much as you're comfortable with you're going to sew all along the waistband up the side across the top down the other side and then across this side just on the waistband and you want to do about a 1 8 inch seam allowance all the way around and then meet me back here for the next step now it's time to put the snaps on if you're going to be using a snap if you want to do a button and button hole go ahead and do that but I'm going to be using a snap and here are the snaps I'm using and I'll put a link in the description box for these and you'll need one of these setter snap setters and I will put a link in the description box for that and then you'll need a hammer I'm sure you might have a hammer around your house but you probably don't have one that this is this cute so I'll put a link in the description box for this and it also has a screwdriver on the end so you should have a circle that you marked on your left waistband piece from the pattern piece and that's for a button but we're going to use it for a snap so find the prong in your snap set that has a hole in the middle and you're going to poke it through the wrong side of your left front skirt piece be careful it has very sharp prongs and you'll probably need to take like a pen or a pencil eraser and kind of push it the fabric down so the prongs will come through There's my prongs sticking out be careful they're sharp and then you want to get the stud part from your snap set and you're going to put it on top of the prongs with the stud facing up and then you're going to get your setter tool and see it has a little hole there that's what the stud of your snap is going to go into so place that on your snap and then get your hammer and just give it a few gentle-ish taps you don't have to kill it but just give it a few taps and then check it mine didn't work so I'm going to try it again there you go there's the first part how easy was that now position your skirt in front of you right side up and fold in your front skirt piece and put a clip right here on your side seam so we'll know that that's nice and straight and then clip it a few places across the top your waistband so we'll know that everything's staying nice and straight and then do the same thing on the right side of your skirt clip together the seams of your waistband so you know that they're nice and straight and then clip down the sides just a few clips and making sure everything is nice and straight here's your stud that we just put in so put your waistband your right waistband across that 
making sure everything's set, staying nice and straight. And then just kind of push down on that stud and it'll make a mark on the right side of our skirt piece. So you should have a little indention from the stud and that's going to show us where to put the next piece. So this is the decorative part of the snap. The snap that we'll be showing on the front and then there are the prongs so center that over the indention you just made let me get this out of the way so I'm going to be hammering so center that over the indention you just made and then push your prongs through to your facing. Make sure they're all the way through there. And get a pen or an eraser or something and push your fabric down. And then put this right side up. And then you're going to put the last piece left in your snap set. If you're, you'll notice the inside center, there's a smaller hole on that side. And then if you flip it over, there's a larger hole. So we want the smaller hole right side up. And you're going to put that over your prongs your snap and then get your snap setter and this time we're going to use the large part put it down over your snap piece that you just put on and then give it a few good whacks with your hammer. Check it and make sure it got it. All secure. And then snap your skirt. What'd you guys think? That was your first snap. How quick and easy is that? It's so much easier and faster than a button. So now your skirt is finished if you use the hem band, but if you didn't use the hem band, go ahead and hem it according to Diane's instruction in the pattern. Finished your no zip skirt. I hope you had fun and learned some things. I'll be back in just a second to chat with you guys. Oh, what did you guys think about making the no zip skirt? I hope you had a lot of fun. I hope you learned some things. If you did sew along with me, I would love to see your skirt. Please tag me on Instagram. And also, I have a tip jar on this video if you'd like to give me a tip. If you can't, don't worry about it. No worries at all. The most important thing you can do to help me is like this video, comment, share it, and also about commenting. If you have any questions about anything in the tutorial, please ask. I'll be happy to help as best I can. And also let me know if you'd like to continue seeing tutorials. I'll be happy to do those for you if it's something that you would like to do. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch my video. If you'd like to see future videos of things I make and tutorials, please subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate it. See you next time. Bye.